See tonight, Revelation chapter number nine. You remember over these past six or five judgments, the first judgment or the first trumpet judgment, a third of the vegetation was destroyed. The second trumpet judgment, we see a third of the oceans and the seas were destroyed. The third trumpet judgment, a third of the fresh water was destroyed. The fourth trumpet, you see that there was a third of the luminaries darkened, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Last week, we looked at the fifth trumpet. That was that the demons that were released from the abyss or the bottomless pit that would torture mankind for five months. Now, remember, they couldn't kill, but they tortured people for five months. Tonight, we're looking at a different army tonight. We're looking at an army that I believe, personally, and again, I encourage you to study the scriptures for yourself. I believe that this is a human army that we're reading about tonight in the sixth trumpet. And so follow along with me if you would. And we want to look at five different things in these verses from verse 13 to verse number 21. In Revelation chapter number 9, John the Revelator, and let me, let me share this with you. Please keep this in the back of your mind as we read this. John is on the Isle of Patmos in the first century, and God has told him, I want you to write what you see. And what John has written is inspired by God. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind as we read tonight. It says in verse 13 of Revelation 9, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were of the heads of lions, and of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Tonight we want to look at this, and we want to look at this army that I believe is being described here to us as the sixth trumpet judgment. And the first thing I want to look at is back in verses 13 through 15. And I want to look at this army that is being released. The army that is being released we see in verses 13 through 15. Go back and it says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now, let me ask you this. In studying this, we are going to see, and this is what I believe in this text here, is that this army is going to rise up out of the east. A lot of people think this. A lot of people think, because of the way things are, that this army is coming from China. China is that big. I do not believe that personally. I, tell you, I think it's going to come from basically what was the Bible daytime around the place of Babylon. And I'll tell you that, and the reason I tell you that is because of the river that is mentioned here is the river Euphrates. If you look at the river Euphrates, you will see that on a map, and you'll see that just north of that is the river Tigris. And if you understand and if you study and you look at this, the Euphrates runs parallel with the Tigris River, and in between these two rivers is a place that was known in Bible times as Mesopotamia, and in the recent times as Mesopotamia. Now, when you study that and you look at that, what does that mean? Meso means middle, which means this. It must have been an area between the two rivers of the Euphrates River and the Tigris River. And if you study and you look at that, in Bible times, there was a very prevalent city in between the Euphrates and the Tigris River by the name of the city that everybody's heard the name Babylon, which is there, which is very prominent in prophecy, especially in the end times when it comes to the Antichrist. So keep that in the back of your mind as well when we talk about this army that is going to come out from the east. And we're going to understand this and we are going to look at this. 
And I also want you to understand this, that this area also is what a lot of Bible scholars believe close to where the Garden of Eden was, is where this is going to be at. As a matter of fact, if you look at this, there's a very familiar city also in between the Euphrates and the Tigris River by the name of Shinar. Anybody remember from your Bible study who was from the city of Shinar? The father of the Jews? Abram. That's where he was called out, out of idol worship, to go to the promised land, to be the father of the nation of Israel. He is from Shinar, which is, would have been located. If you look at a map, folks, and you want to know a map, because I know Mesopotamia and all these towns, Babylon are no longer there. If you want to look at a map and see where this is, where I believe is it, it's the modern-day Iraq. And so if you want to look at your map and you want to kind of see where about all this is, you can look on your map, look at modern-day Iraq, see where it's at. And this is where I personally believe that this is the time that we're seeing. And this is this army of the east that we see here in the sixth uh, trumpet judgment. And this area is believed to be where the human history began. Abram was called out of this area. And so I want you to look at this, and I want you to go back with me if you would, and I want you to see here that the angel, the sixth angel, sounded his trumpet. And the Bible says this, it says, He let loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now, be careful because there are some Bible scholars that will teach you here that these are fallen angels. These are demonic angels that they believe because the reason they say that is because the Bible says that they were loosed or they had to be loosed or that they were bound. I don't know that. I don't know. Remember what I told you at the beginning. Make much ado about Jesus. Everything else that's up for deal, don't waste time arguing it because if God wanted us to know, he would have clearly told us this. Are these demonic angels, fallen angels? I don't know. Are these angels that are in heaven that God gave a specific job for? I don't know. But you see here where it says this, the reason they think that they were demonic or fallen because the Bible says here that these angels, that they had to loose these four angels and they that were bound in the great river Euphrates. But here's what I want you to see is this. I want you to understand this. That no matter how bad it gets, I want you to look at verse number 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were Here's the word I want you to look at with me, prepared. Prepared, when you look at that, simply means this, they were made ready. You know who they were prepared by? God. How do you know that? Let me give you, let me give you this real quick. Go to Jonah, chapter number 1, verse number 17. Let me show you another word, another time we see prepared. In Jonah, chapter number 1, very familiar Bible story, since you've been in church for any amount of time as a child, Jonah and the whale, the big fish, whatever kind of fish it was. You say, was it a, it had to be a blue whale, Pastor. It had to be one of the, the killer whales, one of the big whales. As far as I'm concerned, God could have let a minnow swallow him. I don't know. That's just the way God works. All right. But you look at this. Look at verse number 17 of chapter 1 of Jonah. The Bible says this. Now the Lord had what? Prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. It's the same thing that we see here in Revelation 9, 15, where it says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared. The Lord had them prepared for a reason. There's something that they are going to do. There's something that they are going to accomplish. What is that? It's that sixth trumpet judgment that God has released on the planet at this time. And so we see this here, and we continue, and he says this, and here's the thing about the Lord I want you to understand. It's so important that as we look through here and we see this, he says they were prepared for what? For an hour and a day and a month and a year. They were prepared for a certain time. Does God give us the specific time, folks, there? No. Don't worry yourself tonight and go studying hours upon hours trying to figure out what the timetable is on this. If God wanted us to know, he would have told us clearly. Basically, God says this, I've prepared them for this day, for this hour, for this month, this year, to do what they want done. We don't give them a time frame, folks. We just got to trust by faith these are things that are going to happen because the Bible says so. But I want you to look at what they're going to do. When they did this, for whatever time, it says, why? For to slay the third part of men. A third part, folks, of humanity is fixing to be slain by this army. That's a lot of folks. 
Do you realize this? Realize with me in the back of your mind what has just happened here. Because at the end of the seven trumpet judgments is at the end of the first three and a half years of the tribulation. We're almost to that midpoint of the tribulation period where we start the last three and a half years where the Antichrist breaks his peace treaty with the nation of Israel and his real colors are revealed. And that's why the last three and a half years are called the Great Tribulation. Because it's getting worse and worse and worse with the different trumpet, with the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and then lastly, in the last three and a half years, we'll see the bold judgments that will be poured out upon the planet. And so here we want to see this. Think about this with me real quickly. The rapture has occurred. There's no telling how many folks will be missing from the planet at that point. That's going to cause a great problem, would it not? You see here within a three and a half year period of that happening, three to three and a half year period of that happening, it says an army is going to rise up and the Bible says there in verse 15, and they are going to slay a third part of humanity. Now folks, let me share something with you. Think of the math in your head. That's a lot of folks in a short amount of time basically thinking they're going to lose their life. But here's an even more sombering thought is this. Think about this. Go back to Revelation chapter number six and verse number eight. This has happened in between the rapture and where we're at presently in the scriptures. Listen to what it says. Remember this, the fourth seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over how much? A fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, death, with beasts of the earth. Folks, listen to me. The rapture is taking place. We're not sure how many people have left the planet with that. A fourth, you see there in the fourth bowl, in the fourth judgment, seal judgment, a fourth of humanity has been taken off the planet. Now you go to Revelation chapter number 9, verse number 15. Look what happens here, folks. A third's taken. Take your fingers like this. You want to take a quarter, take your pinky, take a third, take that. What is it? Half of humanity in about a three and a half year span has been taken off the planet. Now let that sink in real quick. That is a lot of people gone. There's a lot of people who are going to lose their lives during this time. It's a very tragic time. And so we want to look here, and I want you to see this, that the population, and look at that, and we want to look at this army that is shown to us here in Revelation chapter number 9. Not only will we see the army that is absolutely revealed to us, but then I want you to look at this, the army that is released. The second thing I want you to see in verse 16 is the army's number. How big this army is is going to blow your mind, folks. Look at verse number 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. Folks, I don't know if your Bible says it or not. You know how big of an army that is? That's 200 million people. That is a large army. 200 million people that are going to be released in an army with the whole sole purpose of this, killing a third of humanity. I'm going to share something with you. I dare say there's going to be not going to be too many armies going to be able to withstand that. A 200 million member army. Now, as we continue on, we want to look at this. We see the army's number, but then look at verse number 17 with me. We want to look at the army's description. Remember, John is speaking here, and John says this. He says, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were the head of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. You say, Pastor, is that a literal picture? I tend to think it is. John was only in the first century B.C., folks. They had horses back then. He knew what a horse looked like. People say this, say, but Pastor, what if that's representation symbolic of an atomic bomb? Let me share something with you. I don't think an explosion and a horse look the same. I think what you see here is a literal translation of what John saw you said but pastor that seems awful demonic listen to me folks no more demonic than the movies are coming out of Hollywood and let me share something with you if man's mind can be so wicked and depraved to put things together can you imagine what the creator of the world could do in this you look here with me and see what it says John said and I saw what horses 
And then this, why do I believe it's an army out of the east? Because this, it says, and them that set on them. I believe these are the men, these are the soldiers. They will be sitting upon them. Having breastplates of fire and of jacinth, which is a blue uh, jewel, and brimstone. This one says, and the heads of the horses were the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone, or another word for brimstone is sulfur. Very poisonous. You stop and think about this, little folks. Horses with the heads of lions, that's pretty scary. You stop and think about this, how many of them are there? 200 million? That's even scarier thought. And then you continue down and you look at this and it says this, and their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. The army's destruct, the description that we see here is not pleasant to me. But I want you to continue on with me and I want you to see their destruction in verses 18 and 19 with me. Verse number 18 says this, By these three was a third part of men killed. By what three? By the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone of the sulfur which issued out of their mouths. For their power, whose power? The horses. For their power is in their mouth. Look at this. You thought it was bad because they had a head of a lion. Continue reading here. Because their power is in their mouth and in their tails... For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. A horse with the head of a lion and the tail of a serpent that has a head on the end of the serpent. I'm guessing they can do some damage. And you look about this, and the Bible says here, For their powers in their mouth and in their tails. And by the third part of humanity being killed by these three, by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone. So we see the army's destruction of verses 18 and 19. But let me give you this in closing because I know we have this meeting tonight. But then I want you to see the saddest part of this whole thing is verses 20 and 21 to me is this. Humanity's non-repentance. Do you realize what people have had to watch all the way up to this point who are still here on earth? Because let me remind you folks, listen to me. Technology's still around. They're going, to be able to see, they're going to be able to see what's going on. People are going to be filming things with their phones. News cameras and news crews, I think, are going to be filming things that are going on and watching these things. And seeing this, here's the sad part. Follow me in verse number 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not. You would think surely anybody who has already sat through and watched this would have repented to God. And they called out for God to save them. But I'm going to show you something here in a minute. Yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils or worship demons. Devil worshiping. And idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented. Listen how bad it's going to be. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Folks, I'm sure saying it. The wickedness, what we see now, looks like a fairy tale to what life's going to be like during this time. It's going to be absolutely horrible. Horrendous even when you stop and think about this. But let me share some with you to show you this. How man's heart will continually grow more wicked and more wicked and more wicked. You remember in the first time when we started talking about the seven seal judgments, I pointed out to you something. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but this is very important, especially for those who say this. Say, well, pastor, you know what? I'm going to live the way I want to. And you know, when I know that the rapture takes place, then I'll accept Jesus Christ. If you ever have somebody tell you this, try to bring a sombering thought to them and help them realize this. Do you really truly think that when the rapture occurs, if you are a lost individual, that you will immediately accept Christ. Listen to this. Planes will be falling from the sky. Cars will be absolutely crashing. People will be dying. And you think you're going to be calm enough to stop and say, Dear God, please forgive me of my sins. And all that's going on in this, because as we see this, listen to me, man's heart gets harder and harder and harder. Let me give it to this when we're done. 
Look back in Revelation chapter number 6 with me. Do you realize in Revelation chapter number 6, if you remember in verses number 15 and 16, man was hiding from the face of God. You remember that? But go with me, Revelation 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth and great men, rich men, and the chief captains and mighty men, every bondman, every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Man was scared at that point. They were fearful of God, hiding from God. Go to Revelation chapter number 9. And what do you see in Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21? They're getting a little bolder, aren't they? Their hearts are getting a little more hard. They're not asking for the rocks to hide them. Now they're non-repentant. Now they are acting out and living in their sin. A little bit bolder, a little bit harder, a little bit more complacent. And then for time's sake, we don't have it. Go to Revelation chapter number 19. You're going to see these same men getting so hard and so bold that now they're going to be going to war with God. You see a progression between Romans chapter number 6, or Revelation 6, Revelation 9, Revelation 19, how man gets harder and harder and harder. You don't see man repenting over time. Man's heart gets harder and harder and harder toward the things of God, folks. It's a dangerous place, whether it's yourself or somebody you know says this, I don't want to get saved right now. I'll get saved when I know the rapture occurs. Folks, we're not guaranteed that. And that's why it's such an urgency that we share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because like I said, this is horrible. I would not wish this on a, if I had an enemy, on the worst enemy I had. I wouldn't wish, wish this on anybody. But we have such an importance, an important responsibility, diligently to share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so nobody would have to suffer and go through this. All right? Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for the beautiful day you've blessed us with today. Lord, thank you for the wonderful singing, the praise and the worship for our children, blessing our hearts. Thank you for the preaching. Thank you for the time we had to come together as family and to laugh and have a good time. Now, Father, I ask that you would take us out from this place. Help us to be a light for you. Help us to pray and look for opportunities to share the gospel and to be Christ to those that you put in our path this week. We love you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask you.